All right, welcome to Quick Show. My name is Greg Matson, and I am your host. In this episode, is the church again in legal and financial trouble? A decision by the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals last Monday might give the answer of yes. Now, before we delve into this, I want to talk again about Scripture Notes. This is the new program that I use every single day for my Scripture study. Gospel Library was okay. That is getting me a foundation and an ability to, with some features, but Scripture Notes is like Scripture study on steroids. It is a game changer. It makes Scripture study funner. It makes it more interesting. It More than anything, I would suggest to you that it makes it more fluid. It allows you to reach into all of the Scriptures in a new way. It is like nothing you've seen before. It really is a transformational product. Because of that fluidity and all of the features that are given in Scripture Notes, it, in my opinion, allows you to gain more revelation, that personal revelation on what you should study and the topics that you're working on. Go to ScriptureNotes.com. Again, ScriptureNotes.com. Go there now. All right, last Monday, the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals brought back to life a lawsuit that was filed by James Huntsman, an ex-member of the church who wants his tithing money back millions of dollars. This is a claim of fraud by the church, stating that the church in building the City Creek Center Mall and bailing out the beneficial financial group insurance company, $600 million, was fraudulent because they said that tithing funds would not be used for this. And James Huntsman and his attorneys are saying it was used, that tithing money was used for this. Now, what the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals is saying is you need to throw out the whole beneficial life thing. That doesn't make sense in, in, in bringing this lawsuit back up. So they've parted with that, that $600 million. Now, you think about it, and thank goodness the church has the, the $600 million that it can easily bail out the insurance company. And it's not a problem for the church. Right, that hundred billion dollar rainy day fund that they supposedly have, I'm gonna guess it's much larger than that, allows them to take care of obstacles like this. I have zero problem with that. I I, I wish they had a trillion dollars. There is no organization in the world that I would rather see with a trillion dollars in cash and 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 investments than the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. Now, having said that. I only want that if there is a check and balance system in the church and there is more transparency. I do believe that that needs to be the case. But getting back to the lawsuit here, what they're saying is is that especially with Gordon B. Hinckley in the 2000s, he in the October conference of 2006, he states there's going to be a large development that the church is going to pay for and that it will not be paid for by tithing funds. Now, here's the question. What are tithing funds? Let's listen to President Gordon B. Hinckley now. The church is undertaking a huge development project in the interest of protecting the environment of Temple Square. While the cost will be great, it will not involve the expenditure of tithing funds. Love that guy. All right, so there you heard it directly from President Gordon B. Hinckley in October conference, general conference of 2006. Tithing funds will not be used. What are tithing funds? Here is where this is going to be. This is where the battle is going to be. What are tithing funds? James Huntsman and his attorneys are going to say that any interest and return on investment or income produced by the tithing funds given to the church by the members of the church is tithing. The church is going to say we used funds that were built off of interest and and investment returns and income produced by um, assets that the church has in order to pay for the City Creek Center Mall. So what are tithing funds? In my mind, I look at this and I say, okay, well, what am I going to pay? What is tithing? We, we have very clear definitions. It's all over the, uh, uh, the church website. It's, it's stated uh, over and over again in church history and 
different conferences and talks, etc., that it's 10% of the increase of each member of the church. That's what tithing is. So when I pay in my 10% amount to the church for tithing, that's, that's what it is. Now, what the church does with that money or how that, in, that, that donation increases is not of my concern in terms of tithing. That is not something I have anything to do with. I don't claim an additional part of that increase as my tithing. Otherwise, I could use that in the balance sheet, maybe against future tithing, right? Future 10% that I'm going to pay. It's like, wait a minute. You made 3% on my money this year. I'm only paying 7% in in tithing. They are not the same bucket. They're different financial buckets. But that's really what this is going to come down to, is what Gordon B. Hinckley and others have said in this period about tithing funds. To me, it's pretty clear, but to others it may not be. Now, there are other questions about this. For example, should the church even be involved with these enterprises? I could completely understand, based on what President Hinckley says here, they're trying to protect the, protect the environment. Of you know, This is during uh, uh, where, what ends up becoming actually a very difficult financial period. And the City Creek Center Mall really helped stimulate business in downtown Salt Lake. Okay, it, great. That's a positive. The question is, is that the job of the church? Maybe it is. Who am I to question what the brethren do, right? Or is that... Is that part of what a church does? And so there are, there's a lot of criticism. You know, this $100 billion, apparently, that we have, $150 billion, whatever it is, what do you do with those funds? Is it good that they have that for a rainy day? Well, when you're talking about the beneficial financial group bailout of $600 million, pretty nice that they had a, a large coffer of funds that they could take care of that with the blink of an eye. But there's something here also that I think requires a lot of clarity. Critics of the church and even members of the church criticize the church for having all of this money. And it's like, well, what about the poor? What about those that go hungry? The church works in those areas all the time. That's not what tithing is for. If you want tithing to go to that, you have to change the definition of tithing. As members of the church know, there are different areas for the ledger of donations with the church. When we submit a donation slip online mostly now there are different categories there's tithing then there's humanitarian okay well the humanitarian goes toward humanitarian needs and we do an amazing job with that as as a group as members of the church and and as a church as a whole tithing isn't meant for that in fact it would be fraudulent some could claim if the church's tithing dollars went toward humanitarian needs, because tithing dollars are meant to build up the kingdom of God. There are other categories such as missionary, and those dedicated donations go to the missions and to missionary work. That's where they're supposed to go. Otherwise, why am I having a category on the donation slip? Now, if they took funds that I give for the missionary program, and they give it over to the tithing funds or they give it over to the humanitarian funds, now there's a problem. That could be fraudulent. But when many individuals critique the church on this large sum of money that they have and why they're not giving it to the humanitarian in humanitarian needs, we do do that. But members of the church direct outside of tithing where, uh, where they're going to place their donations. I don't know the dollar amount, but I would love to know the total dollar amount of money annually that goes in for these areas. I think that should be more transparent, quite frankly. If How much money in humanitarian donations did the church collect in 2022? I, I'm sure it's substantial, and I'm sure that that money is used in humanitarian aid. And I, I also am cert certain that the church does a more effective and efficient job with the money of those donations that in perhaps any other organization in the world because of the volunteer force of the members of the church. I trust the fiduciary responsibility of the leaders of the church. Now, having said that, again, I think it's very important that there is a check and balance system in place. 
I'm guessing there is. I hope there is. Now, speaking of some of the members of the church that critique the management of the, of, of the funds of the church, and again, this, this big fund, this massive fund that the church has, here's one, Jana Reese. Now, Jana Reese is oftentimes critical of the church. She writes this, let's see here, this is written in December, on December 24th, Christmas Eve, 2020. So this is about the time of tithing settlement, right? Title of the article picked up by the Salt Lake Tribune is Why I Stopped Paying Tithing to the LDS Church. And again, this comes at a time where the uh, expose on the church and this, this huge, these huge funds with Ensign Peak Advisors that we have all this money in the church and it's it's there and it's not going toward humanitarian needs. That's usually the complaint. And so she's going to stop paying tithing to the church. And she says, look, I'm just going to go in tithing settlement and I'm going to say, okay, I didn't pay any money here anymore to the church, but I'm paying my 10% to whatever charity I choose to. She says in her concluding paragraph here, at tithing settlement this year, I declare myself a full tithe payer and explain why none of that money has gone to the church. Okay? Then it's not tithing. It's not tithing. Tithing isn't your decision on where to give humanitarian aid. That is not what tithing is. She says, I don't know what the fallout there will be from this decision, if any. Frankly, it's not important whether I continue to hold a temple recommend or not. She wants change, right? Right? What's important to me is that at least a a few kids who didn't have food or access to education will have meals, schools, and the basics. I should have done this a long time ago. And there are many members of the church that follow her advice or have followed her advice, either, either directly or decided to do the same thing. And this was exactly one of the reasons that, by the way, that the church gives for not being more transparent with how much money they have. And I'm kind of on both sides on that. But I, I get that, right? They're afraid that people won't pay the tithing because they see they have so much money. But what Jana Reese here is saying is wrong. It has nothing to do with humanitarian aid. Now, what would be nice, perhaps, is some explanation from the church to the members. I just don't care about the world and the messaging to the world so much. It seems to me like the church has really moved to that side of things with caring about what we tell the world and the press more than what we tell the membership of the church sometimes. And it's like, okay, we're given the money. <laughs> we give the money. It would be nice to have the messaging to us about that, right? So there's a lot of things to consider about this. Again, going back to the point of should the church be involved with these enterprises? And now, again, if you've got all this money, why not produce more? It's fiscally responsible. If I'm running a portfolio, and I'm looking at businesses or to buy, or I'm looking at, uh, at real estate, or I'm looking at what type of uh, investments I might want to put it in, such as bonds and, and stock and mutual funds. You know, what do you do with that money? Do you just let it sit and lose value with inflation? You know, probably not. The, the question I have is, you know, when I have critiques that are, let's call them Latter-day Saint affiliate critiques of things it's about those enterprises and 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 many of those enterprises have gone very are going very woke for example you've heard me talk a lot about deseret book uh not as much anymore but a couple years ago deseret news it's 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 it, it can cause so many problems because of social justice moving into all of these entities go look at some of these websites from these entities that the church owns uh, there there there's dei and critical race theory and and just woke common woke statements everywhere how does that not leak up into the church so this will be interesting to see what happens with this lawsuit there there are there's a lot on the line for the church here a lot on the line you know tens maybe hundreds of millions of dollars that could be claimed by other uh, disaffected members of the church. But can we please be clear on what tithing is and, and why the church might have all of this money and how they're going to use it based on you, the member of the church, and how you dictate what categories those donations are going to go into? 
We will be sure to follow the developments of this story on the show. Thanks for listening.